This is an iMac. And this is a full fat desktop graphics card. And with the power of this, we'll have them working fully together. Hopefully. Now, why would you want to do this? Some of you might remember a couple of videos ago, I managed to install El Capitan on this iMac. And while yes, it worked, it didn't really work that well. One major issue being graphics, or the lack thereof. And so since then, I've been thinking if there was a way that I could possibly fix that. And I think I did find a plausible option. So let's have a look, shall we? So first order of business, opening up the iMac. Now, usually this would be a little bit harder, but um, mine is already somewhat eager to come open. I've already taken off the RAM door. By that, I mean it fell off. Um, so yeah, mine in particular is actually very easy to open because I, uh, I, I broke it. It's broken. So since we've already got one of these metal clips hopefully undone for us, all we need to do is undo the other one. So for that, I'm going to be using this. A very, very vintage, very, very collectible and um, cool, probably just to me, Google Play gift card from like 2014, back when they had the good logo. So um, yeah, there's just no replacing that serif font. Are you serious? Okay, well you get the idea. I'm just going to use like something else. The funny thing about these metal clips, just like most things, the more and more you push into and use them, they become looser. Um, not that I would really know anything about that. I just gotta store this somewhere safely. And now, because FCC reasons, yours will be sealed, but mine has been opened like a thousand times, and thus just sort of... Wait. Is that really the only reason this is here, is just as shielding? So now with the shielding removed, we can see our target. This right here, the lovely airport card which, if everything comes together and works properly, should be our gateway into connecting this graphics card. This is just a slower, different port than this one. This is a 1X, most likely, PCIe connector, and this is a 16X PCIe connector. And, uh, yeah. So before I show you guys the adapter, we're going to need to remove this thing. So I'm going to use this T6 driver. Is it T6? Let's get this display connector out of the way. Yours will be screwed in. Mine isn't for obvious reasons. And with the screws removed, we can remove the antenna connector like that and then take it out. And uh, it, it's out. Nice. So here's our adapter. As you might notice, it consists of three parts. First being our main board, which does the actual converting and power delivery. The little board, which we put inside of the iMac to convert MPCIe to what appears to be mini USB. And our very, very special proprietary USB cable, which you definitely can't get a replacement for. So don't mess it up. So to put it together, all we have to do is put this part in here and then put this part in here. Now the adapter is basically ready, except next we have to put in the graphics card, which goes in here, which you just gotta make sure this is pulled back. Take the graphics card, put it in, and then put the thing back to retain it. And now it's not coming out. And now you might think, oh, this is done. We can just put this inside of the computer, right? We've got the card, we've got the adapter, we've got the thing that goes in there, right? Well, unfortunately, no. Um, as you might notice, there is another port here, that of course being this one right here, and that's because PCIe 16X usually provides up to 75 watts from the port. We're not drawing that from this little tiny connector, so we need to supplement our own power, which is why the kit includes this. A SATA to PCIe a SATA to PCIe cable, which now we need to put this into something. This is where it gets messy. So for our purposes, this measly CX-500 will do just fine. So another thing you're going to need, it just keeps getting worse I know, is one of these. So essentially what this does is it tells the power supply to run all of the time. Essentially pressing the power button on your computer because it has one of these in it, most likely. You can do this with a paperclip, but using one of these there's less of a chance you just horrendously break something. And now with that attached, we just need to put this onto here, like that. 
and it's done. And there you have it. You now have an external GPU in this extremely compact package. Who needs a Razer core? So now we can take our lovely connector from the adapter and put it where the airport card went. Just gotta push the display cable out of the way. And the Wi-Fi cable also has to get out of the way. And then it goes in like that. And it's, it's going. And it's in. And try and route this so it's not putting so much strain on that connector. Then I can put the display connector back in. And it's ready, I, I think. Except, no, not quite, because there is another thing which we need in order to make this come together. It just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. And we're gonna push these out of the way. Because we're also gonna need a whole other display. So now I gotta plug in the power. Now, you might be wondering, why do we need a whole other display? Well, um, since we're using an external graphics card, we can't exactly just, you know, pipe its output into the display. Because in here is the graphics adapter, the Intel GMA950. And over here is the GT7300 we're going to try and use. And since I don't have an adapter for this port, we're gonna have to use another display. Because we can't get this output into this monitor because, again, no adapter. So now with a total of three outlets used, we need to use this DVI adapter to go to VGA because this monitor is ancient. But let me tell you, it is the most reliable monitor I have. And then I can put this in here and it's together. You got that in there. You've got this whole thing populated. We can just put it down. I'm just gonna put it on top of the power supply because that like conserves room. So now their external monitor plugged into power, the, the lights on. With our power supply plugged into power, we need to turn both of these on at the same time. This doesn't look good. We're booting into El Capitan. The other monitor is in sleep. Huh. What about if we boot it up again, but with this on plugged. So there's only one display connected. So. Oh my god! It technically works. It doesn't like it, but it technically works. It works! What? Okay, I'm not trying to be excessive here. Guys, this works. What? Why? It. Uh, I mean, it makes sense why it should work, but I didn't really expect it. So we needed to disconnect the display here, so it only had one output. But we have an external GPU connected to the iMac, and it actually works. So okay, um, it's really slow, but I guess we, uh, I guess we expect that from El Capitan on this. You know, I wish there was a way I could really show that this was running. You know, that's unplugged. Here, let me do this. Just unplug it. Yep, see, the display turned off. I can plug it back in. And, and it works. We have a 7300 GT connected to this iMac. So, again, it's ridiculously slow. I mean, like, seriously slow. Uh... You said we double bonged there too. Uh huh, that's weird. There's clearly some stability problems here, but as a proof of concept, this is great. I mean, seriously, this is all I could have hoped for. <laughs> it's yet to be seen if this will work with a better graphics card. I do plan to test that, but. Wow. You could roast hot dogs on that thing right now, but luckily, I was listening to that also. So, uh, Matt, to answer your question, um, no, it doesn't, it doesn't work. It's even worse since mine's over a 1x link, but it obviously doesn't work because I can't even move the mouse at this point. Like, see? You're getting no mouse movement. It's, it's, 
I would bring up the About This Mac to show you, but it's, 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 uh, it's dead. So before we try a newer graphics card, there is one other thing I want to do first. See, even the boot picker menu. Look at that. It's the boot picker menu. Progress. Progress. Now this is going to be slow too because we're running over Firewire because I don't have an install of 10.6 on this computer. Okay, so if we go over here to graphics and displays, there we go. Now you can see it. Now you can see it. NVIDIA G4 7300 GT connected via PCIe and the slot says airport. Guys, and the GMA 950 is built into the chipset. Nice. What are PCIe lane with 1X? <laughs> nice. So if this works this well, go away. So if it works this well, we might be able to try what I was thinking of. So let's see here. Will Final Cut Pro 10, the very first version, actually work? Because there was a version for Snow Leopard. It just requires a 64-bit CPU and a GPU with OpenGL support. Which... Are you guys ready for a first? This will be the first time that Final Cut Pro has ever been run on a 20... On a 17-inch iMac. They never made these with an OpenGL graphics card as far as I know. It was only like the... 24 inch that had a 7300 GT because they put off a lot of heat. This one right here burning my hands. We need to finish this quickly before this GPU melts. So I was kind of having a big dumb moment. I forgot that I've had those fans in the back of the set for like a couple videos now. Then I kind of realized, hey, I had the power supply. I can kind of just literally use them. And um, so I, I did. We now have active cooling on the graphics card and it's less hot now. <laughs> Okay, it's taking a little while. That's fine. Totally not really anxious or anything. No, no, no. You, you take your time bouncing there. So, you're still gonna let me continue, right? Oh. Eight. I, I think you are. I think you are. This works. It works. Final Cut Pro on the tooth that It's... You need to not forget the fact that we're running all this on this piece of garbage. Can we make a pro- We can make a project. And it's- Could- It, it definitely could be worse. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, do we import some footage? I think we import some footage. So I now have this better graphics card. A GTX 770. You know, this is pretty good in today's terms. Don't ask where I got this from. Holy shit, you fucking killer dude! Uh... So some of you might actually be wondering, and this is a pretty good time to talk about it, why did you use the SATA adapter? And well, you might notice um, that there's two okay, power jacks. Cool. This right here, even though it's really old, is still like a 200 watt graphics card. And some plebeian power supplies, like this one, only have enough for one graphics card. So it includes this adapter, so you can break it out, so that you get all of the 12 volt that you need for your purpose. Which, believe it or not, that's what this adapter is meant for. Putting big old graphics cards in little computers. Which, at least this I'm using for its intended purpose. So, okay, now we just need to do what we did before. Turn this on a couple seconds before, then turn this one on. And the graphics card is running. This is before zero RPM fans were really a thing. The juice light is on. I'm not sure why. That's not really a good sign. Uh, maybe we did stretch our luck a little bit here. Okay, I reseeded some stuff. Let's have another go at it. Well, that is substantially worse. So that plugged in, we can do it again. Internal display appears to be working. The light went out. And yep, just got the GMA 950, but to be entirely sure, I can go over here to system report. Oh, what the heck? Okay, it is detecting something, but it doesn't want anything to do with it. Yeah, it's detecting something, that's for sure. So after some testing, I can't really get this thing to do anything actually useful. And by that I mean outputting to it. It clears, it's clearly detecting it okay. As we can see here, it is showing up. Um, oh, don't worry about that blue 
ness. It's 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 fine. You just need to press it in a little. And I know someone is like, oh, okay, you probably just broke the adapter when you switched out the graphics card. And well, as you can see, it still works just as well as it did before, but it just won't do it with that graphics card. Now, there are a couple of reasons why I think that could be the case. First of all being, this is a 7300 GT. There was an iMac model that actually shipped with this desktop graphics card, so there could be some PCIe whitelisting going on, but I super doubt that because this is a different RAM size. This is a different model. This is in the wrong port, and it's okay with it. I, I honestly don't know. Or it could be that that graphics card just requires more bandwidth because it is PCIe too, and it is very much newer, but I really don't know. A real test of this would be to use the Radeon 5770 that shipped with the Mac Pro as the high performance graphics option, but I don't have one of those and I probably won't for a while. So, I mean, until then, this is a really good proof of concept and I think this can be taken a little bit further. So maybe if you want to get one of these and try it out, I'll leave a link to this in the description. So if you want to see me do more with this riser setup, you know, leave a like or something to let me know in the comments. Um, anyways. I give up, that's it.